Hello and welcome. So Michael here and today let's talk about how to approach trauma and how to avoid re-traumatizing yourself when you work with EFT. So this is a big subject. I, I get a lot of questions about this. And actually I did a online masterclass about a month ago now for the recording of this video. So if you want to go into much more detail and learn more about EFT and Chinese medicine and how it understands trauma and going into trauma and things like this, then please check it out in the description below um, because this video is just going to give a brief introduction and provide kind of a, a new way of looking at it potentially and some way you can start with it, start EFT and the process. So also this is not to replace advice by your medical doctor or mental health professional. So let's get into it. So the first tip I have is to use the nine gamma point procedure. The nine gamma point procedure was one of those processes that was developed by Gary Craig when he first created EFT back in the 80s. And it's a sequence that you put on the end of the basic recipe. So the basic recipe EFT is what we all do and what I do on the videos, it's this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, this point, uh, this point, under the arm and on the top of the head. That's described as the basic recipe. And that's the most common EFT sequence used. The nine gamma points is a process of nine extra uh, tapping sequence, which I add on the end. And you can look it up, you can check out my webinar to learn how to do it. Basically, you tap on the back of the hand and you do a sequence of eye movements and then you hum and you count one, two, three, four, five. Now, I use this whenever I come across an emotion or a situation or a memory that is plateauing as far as you know, the basic recipe is doing. So, you know, I'm working on something and then it goes to a seven and I do it again, it doesn't really move. Do it again, doesn't move. So then I, I would use the, the gamma point to knock it, right, to get underneath it. It's very powerful at going deeper. And that's why it's a very good idea to use it whenever you're dealing with something like trauma or just a very strong and overwhelming feeling that you're not feeling like the, the, the generic basic recipe is really working. Now, why does it do it? Now, there's not much science around the nine gamma points, but one thing is for sure is that the eye movements that are involved, there's a link to that with EMDR. So EMDR has been researched quite thoroughly, and that is involved in eye movements. The eye movements, while you're thinking of a particular stress, simply tells the signals, puts signals back in the brain to change the way that it's functioning and processing information. And so I think that's what the nine gamma point is really good at it includes elements where we're moving the eyeballs in certain ways, we're also humming and, and counting. And the humming and the counting is to do with the frontal cortex of the brain. So all fight or flight, all those feelings when you feel unsafe or feel triggered is in the more reptilian part of the brain or the basic aspects of the brain. That's where the signals are. We want to... To process anything, we want to actually encourage it to come to the frontal cortex. When we can bring a memory, for example, to the frontal cortex, it can be emotionally processed, regulated, all these things, right? So the nine gamma points is a, it's like bringing in the cavalry to help get a shift in the brain function, particularly with a difficult emotion uh, and a difficult, overwhelming feeling. So that's the first tip is to use the nine gamma points. The second tip is more about your approach, how to approach trauma with EFT. So I notice a lot of people think they have to be going straight at it to be processing it, right? I have to go tune straight into the, the main trauma and then I have to you know, process or tap or talk about it or whatever it be in order to deal with it. There is a second thought or a second approach, which is more let's sweep it under the rug and never talk about it ever again. So that's more of a 
suppression avoidance process, right? And that's also quite common. There's a third option which I want to pre uh, present, and that third option is to, instead of going straight at the trauma, don't. <laughs> instead, you want to focus on clean, what I call cleaning house. Because every human being, particularly adults, have accumulated a lot of different memories, beliefs, unprocessed emotions, stress, all sorts of things, right? And it's accumulated in their body and accumulated in their mind, in the nervous system, everywhere. There's potentially thousands and thousands and thousands of this stuff, which is unprocessed, lying dormant inside our system. And inside that as well, so you've got thousands and thousands of these unprocessed feelings. As well as that, you've got the traumas inside there as well, which are causing havoc, right? somewhere stored. So instead of going straight at the trauma, what I'd say is go at the other things first for a while, for, for a few months even, because we want to start to bring down the overall accumulation and the overall stress that's inside this person. We want to create a new baseline. We want to bring them down to more stability and psychological steadiness. I would not approach a serious trauma unless the person, unless I got the person down to a particular level of stability first, psychological stability, emotional stability. And that takes some time because there's a lot of other stuff to be cleaned out, right? So, so that's what I'd recommend is you've got a clean house. And what's interesting is that, that, you know, even these little things, like the trivial things like, oh, my... Someone stress, my boss at work stresses me out, or my old partner still stresses me out when I think about it, right? Those little stresses are probably also contributing to the trauma that's stored in there. So it's adding energy. It's all adding energy in some way it's connected in the mind. So just by releasing the little ones, the more trivial aspects in the mind, is that it will also start to reduce the intensity of the energy stored in the trauma memory itself. Now, I can't prove that, but that's what seems to be happening from my experience and observations, is that actually all the stress is connected inside someone. And some, uh, some people have said that they don't want to practice like that because it feels forced. Or they don't want to force themselves into the memories as such. But I completely disagree. I think that when you're triggered and then you're tapping, that's force. You're trying to force yourself to calm down. And you're just like waiting for it to happen and then you do it, right? To me, that's much more force. It's still okay to practice like that. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that it's a misunderstanding. The cleaning house is not about using force. It's about going through the memory banks in an orderly way, finding unresolved, not 10 out of 10 traumas. So you don't go, again, like I said, don't go to the 10 out of 10, don't go to the big traumas, but go to the littler stuff, unresolved stuff, and clean that out. Get that stuff down. That's intelligent, right? Cleaning house is intelligent. Um, and then, again, once that's calm, when everything calms down, then you can approach the traumas, the big ones. But don't go to the big ones. That's... Not yet, not for a while. So that's basically it. So that's the three. First one is you want to use the nine gamut points on anything that's stubborn or not moving. And to learn how to do it, check out my masterclass or you can look it up online. Number two is to focus on cleaning house. Go on the triviality, go to the memory banks. Don't go to the big traumas, basically. Don't go there yet. You want to get the whole system to calm down and be more empty, because by the time you reach level three, stage three, you're gonna feel much more stable, much more strength, much more focus, and that's when you can start addressing the traumas, and that's when I would bring in practitioners, or support, or anything like that, to do it that way, right? So hopefully it's helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.